Welcome to another episode of Practice Makes You Better. In this particular series, we're gonna be tackling vulnerable road users, where I do a 30 question mock test, breaking it down for you, giving you hints, tips, and tricks along the way to give you the best possible chance of passing the theory test first time. I'm gonna be using my app of choice, which is Driving Test Success, the one I get most success with, with my pupils in the classroom. If you struggle with this particular category, then this video is for you. So let me jump onto my iPad and then let's get started. So the first question, you're on a country road that has no pavement. What should you anticipate finding on your side of the road? That's going to be pedestrians. If you're driving the country lane, there's no pavement. It's going to be pedestrians. I'll give you also two other questions they can possibly ask. Which side may they be on the driver's side? Left or the right It's going to be the driver's left walking away from you or towards you, and they're gonna be walking towards you. So in this particular question, it's pedestrians we're looking for, but the other two questions they could ask on the rule test is on the driver's left and walking to the driver. So motorcycles, no, horse riders, no, pedestrians, yes. You're approaching a roundabout. What should you do if there are horses being ridden in front of you? There's only two things you do is slow down, make sure you kill the noise of the engine so you don't spook the horses and give them plenty of room. They can give you either option on the real test. So let's see what they're giving us on this one. So accelerate past as quick as possible. No, because we need to kill the noise of the engine. Treat them like any other vehicle. No, because they're not like any other vehicle. Give them plenty of room. It's going to be that one and sound your horn as a warning, again, you're gonna spook the horse, horses if you do that. Which sign means that there may be people walking along the road? Now that's similar to the very first question, they asked it in word form, now they're showing you in picture form, in other words, road signs. Um, with, remember with images, you're always going from top to bottom. So with the first one, that's a pedestrian crossing because they're crossing your path. The blue one, again, they're coming towards you, but it's got a cycling list. On this one, it says people walking the road. They say people and cyclists, so they can get rid of that one. The one with the red circle, 95% of the red circles are nose. If you watch my road sign videos, so this is no pedestrians. So it's got to be left with the triangle. People walking along the roads. It's gonna be this one. You're driving in town. Why should you be careful if there's a bus at a bus stop on the other side of the road? Pedestrians, simple as that. The bus may, might have broken down, no. The bus might move off suddenly, no. The bus may, might remain stationary, if I can get my words out. Um, and pedestrians might come from behind the bus. It's gonna be that one. You're following a cyclist. What should you do when you wish to turn left a short distance ahead? Now, if you're using the app like I am driving to success, you can enlarge the image. I always suggest you read the question, look at the image and see if you can get clues, what I call golden nuggets from there. So that's what we've got to play around with, with information. Let's read the question again. You're following a cyclist. What should you do when you wish to turn left a short distance ahead? That's just gonna stay behind cyclists. Remember with the ferry test, you're looking for the safest option. So if the left turns a short distance, you might as well stay behind the cyclist. You're not in a rush on the driving test anyway. Put alongside the cyclist and stay level, that makes no sense. I would take the cyclist before you reach a junction. You're gonna be cutting him up in the end. Hold back until the cyclist has passed the junction. That's the safest option. Go around the cyclist on the junction and the answer to that one is a definitely no. What should you do if you see older people crossing the road again you can always love the image elderly people older people the way they want to word it slow down be patient because they apparently when you get to a certain age you struggle to judge distance and speed so wave them across so they know that you've seen them you should be waving anyone across especially on your driving test rev the engine to let them know that you're waiting no that's aggressive tap the horn in case they hard of hearing no, gonna spook them anyway doing that. Be patient and allow them to cross in their own time and that's the safest option. Why should you check for motorcyclists just before turning right into a side road? So they may be emerging from the side road. Emerging is coming out of a junction, so you have to give where lines coming out. The question states you're turning in to a side road, not coming out of a side road, so it's not that one. 
They may be overtaking on your right. That's a possible. And we're talking about the pizza delivery guys, the courier drivers, riders, should I say. In that situation, they will weave in and out of traffic. So you just want to check your mirrors just before turning right, just to make sure it's safe to do it. They may be falling closely. No, they may be overtaking on your left. If they take over to undertaking, that would be on your left. Then there's no point checking the right door mirror. You're turning right from a main road into a side road. There's oncoming traffic. What should you do if pedestrians are standing on the pavement waiting to cross the side road? There's a lot of information in that. So I'm just break it down in smaller chunks. You're turning right from a main road into a side road. So you're on the main road, turning right into the side road. There's no oncoming traffic. So there's nothing coming towards you. So technically you've got priority. And what should you do if pedestrians are standing on the pavement waiting to cross? Stay where you are. Give them priority, let them decide if they want to cross. You don't want to turn halfway and then stop and then they start crossing or whatever it is. So stay where it's safe, allow them to cross the road. So wait and give way to the pedestrians, first one out. Turn in because the pedestrians are safe on the pavement, no. Sound your horn to alert the pedestrians to your presence, no. Wave at the pedestrians again once you wave, your test is over technically, so that's not an option. What does this sign mean? Again, with signs and images, you're going up. So this one has no arrow. So this is with flow cycling. So you've got the cycle on the left, where the white line is, you're gonna be on that side of the car driver. So you're both going up. So this is with flow cycling. If it, if it had an arrow on it, it's contra flow, which means you're going against the flow of traffic. So no arrow is with flow. Arrow, contra flow, going against. So this is with flow, cycle and buses only, no. With flow, cycle lane, yes. Contra flow, cycle lane, remember that's with the arrow, so it's not that one. No cycles or buses, no. Why do motorcyclists use dipped headlights in daylights? Now, not this question can come up in car form. So why should you put your headlights on or why did so-and-so turn their headlights on or dip lights? There's only one reason, to see and to be seen, no other reason. You turn your lights on to see and to be seen. So, so that the car, so that the rider can be seen more easily, yes. To improve the rider's vision, no. To stop the battery overcharging, no. The rider is inviting you to proceed again, no. How should you overtake horse riders? So how should you overtake horse riders? Similar to the question we had before, just word is slightly different. And again, like I said, a recurring theme, if you understand the question, you understand the answers, it doesn't make a difference how they want to spin it, you're still going to get the correct answer. So use your horn just once to warn them again. We, we already decided from the previous question on this one, horn is going to spook them. Speed isn't important, but allow plenty of room. Speed is important. You want to reduce your speed, but yes, give them plenty of room. Drive up close and overtake as soon as possible. Again, no, can't be a safe option. Drive slowly and leave plenty of room. I will add, if you notice speed isn't important, but allow plenty of room, drive slowly leave, and leave plenty of room. Very, very similar. But remember, you're going for the safest option. That's why you were driving slowly, because speed does matter. So we're driving slowly and leave them plenty of room. As you approach a pelican crossing, the lights change to green. What should you do for an older if older people are still crossing, let's give way. If anyone's on a crossing, they're making it sound like you're yeah, older people. If it's a younger person, you can do something different. It doesn't make a difference who's on a crossing when the lights are green. You still got to allow them to finish crossing. Green means go if it's safe to do so. If it isn't safe, believe it or not, it's a pedestrian's priority, not the car driver. So rev your engine, no, it's aggressive. Wave them across again. We know about waving, shouldn't be doing that. Flash your headlights. Flashing your headlights is almost like waving in this context. Flashing of the headlights in the highway code and on the ferry test is warning of your presence. They know you are there because you're sitting there waiting for them to finish crossing. And wait patiently while they cross and that's gonna be the ob obvious answer. Why is a toucan crossing different from other crossing? If you didn't know, toucan crossing stands for two can cross at the same time. Pedestrians and cyclists. Cyclists can legally ride across a toucan crossing. So let's repeat that, toucan, toucan cross at the same time, it means a cyclist can legally ride across. 
Um, I have done a video on the cross sins. I'll leave it up here somewhere so you can actually go and watch that video with all the cross sins and examples of them as well. So cyclists can use it. Yes, it's possible. I always read the other answers just in case there's a better answer. It's controlled by a traffic warden. No. Moped riders can use it. No. It's controlled by two flashing lights. Again, no. What should you do when you are passing loose sheep on the road? If they're on the road, you're going to slow down and be prepared to stop. They're not road train. Beeping a horn is not going to do anything special. So slow down and be patient or be prepared to stop. Is something we're looking along those lines. Heard them to the side of the road? No. Briefly sound your horn? No. Pass quickly but quietly? No. Go very slowly is what we're looking for. Powered vehicles used by disabled people are small and can be hard to see. What must they display if they're traveling on the dual carriageway? Now, this is the mobility scooter, if you don't know what they're talking about. So the mobility scooter, because they're going on the dual carriageway, I think the top of speed for them is eight miles an hour. On dual carriageway, the maximum speed for a car driver is 70 miles an hour. They have to notify that you're slow, they're slow moving. There's going to be an amber light. Again, I've done a video with lights, so I'll leave it up here somewhere so you can go and watch that. So it's going to be an amber flashing beacon, something along those lines. Flashing amber, sorry, flashing blue beacons, first one out. Flashing amber beacons, the next one out. We don't need to read the because there's not going to be a better one than that. That is the answer. You've just passed your driving test. How can you reduce the risk of being involved in a collision? Now, by reducing the risk of having an accident after passing the driving test, it's take more training, which they are referring to the pass plus. Pass plus you can only take after your driving test. Once you pass your driving test, I'll make that quite clear. So we're looking for further training, i.e. pass plus. Um, by staying in the left-hand lane on all roads, that's not possible. By never going over 40 again, that may not be possible. By taking further training, yes. But always staying close to the vehicle in front and you know that's not an option. If you're staying close to the vehicle all the time, you're not passing your driving test. So that's not going to be a issue. What should you do if you want to turn left at junction where pedestrians have started to cross? This is similar to the question we had with pedestrians when turning right into a side road and pedestrians are on the pavement. Again, slow down, stop, wait for them to finish crossing. It's their priority. Something along those lines. Give way to them. Yeah. Go around them, leaving plenty of room. No. Stop and wave again. Once you've got wave in the answer, it's going to be a no. Um, sound you, and again, sounding your horns aggressive. No need for that. Be patient. What does this sign mean? Remember, triangles are warning. So you look at the sign, it's got a cycle in there. So we're looking for something along those lines. Car parking only, sorry, cycle parking only. That's my dyslexia kicking in. Cycle parking only. No. Cycle route ahead. We do, as a driver, we do need to be, no. As a driver, we do need to be warned of cycle routes. So that's what the triangle's doing. No cycling would be a red circle end of cycle we don't need to know when the end is to be fair because the lines on the floor would suggest that if it's a cycle lane so it's going to be cycle route ahead a warning is always good for a motorist the more information you have the calmer you should be especially on your driving test how should you react to inexperienced drivers um be patient um for those of you taking driving lessons you know what it's like when the driver's right behind you, try to be close, intimidate you, beat the horn sometimes because you take long to move off or you stalled it. You want them to be patient. So once you pass your test and you stop behind the learner, don't forget you was a learner once. So we want them to be patient, something along those lines. Sand your horn to warn them. Again, once you've got sand your horn, you can overrule that. Flash your headlights um, to indicate that it's safe for them to proceed. Again, flashing the headlights is warning of your presence, so that's not correct. Be patient and prepare for them to react more slowly. Yes, overtake them as soon as possible. Again, no. You're at the front of a queue of traffic waiting to turn right into a side road. Why is it important to check your right mirror just before turning? Similar to what is the question we had earlier on, just word is slightly different. Again, understand the question, understand the answer. Guess what? You're gonna still pick the right option, which means you should still pass your theory test. So it's always to do with um, bikes, to be fair to check for overtaking vehicles that's the answer is going to be but it's going to be mainly bikes bikes are classed as vehicles as also the classed as road users 
Um, to look for pedestrians about to cross, no. To make sure the side road is clear, no. To check for emerging traffic, again, no. Why, what should you do when you're following a motorcyclist along a road that has a poor surface hold back? If it's got poor surface, they're gonna ride slowly, they're gonna swerve around the potholes, manhole covers, that type of thing, so hold back, be patient. Um, overtake, immediate to avoid delays, no. Allow, allow the same room as normal to avoid wasting road space, no. Follow closely so they can see you in the mirrors, no. Allow extra room in case for a swerve to avoid potholes again. Yes. What action should you take when you see flashing amber lights under a school warning? So flashing amber, so they literally go turn it up, down, up, down, up, down. This only comes on normally when school starts and when school's finishing to warn you because it's in a triangle of school children. And what you should do in the school area is reduce your speed. Increase your speed to clear the area quickly. No, keep up your speed and sound your horn. This, they love a the sound of horn in this category. No, reduce speed until you're clear of the aerial area. Yes, you're going to reduce your speed. Wait at the lights until they stop flashing. You're going to be there for a very long time if you did it in a morning session or the afternoon session. So answer to that one is no. You're driving in slow moving queue of traffic. What should you do just before changing lanes? Um, change that to first gear. Um, that's not a generic answer because automatics don't have gears technically. Look for motorcyclists filtering through the traffic. It's going to be that one. Sound the horn again. Sound your horn. No. Give a slow, slowing down arm signal. Again, no. You're driving past parked cars. What should you do if you see a bicycle wheel sticking out between the cars? Slow down and wave the cyclists. They're waving. No. Accelerate past quickly and sound your horn. No, slow down and be prepared to stop for the cyclist. Yes. So again, the top one says slow down and this one that I've ticked is slow down. But if you read, that's why I said read the answers very carefully because sometimes there's a better answer. So the top one says slow down, but it's got wave in there. Once you've got wave in the answer, it's going to be wrong because waving is not an official signal in the highway code, which means it's not going to be correct. And the last one, break sharply again. Once you've got break sharply in the answer, it's going to be incorrect. What does it mean if you see a pedestrian with a dog that has a yellow or burgundy coat? So if the pedestrian's got a yellow or burgundy coat, pedestrian's got, if the dog has a yellow or burgundy coat, it means the pedestrian's deaf. And when this question comes up in the classroom, the pupil always says, well, what, so if they're deaf, doesn't matter to me, it does. Because the pedestrian's about to cross the road and you can see the dog with the yellow burgundy coat, you now know that person's deaf. So you beeping the horn is not going to change a thing. You're going to have to take action by slowing down and stopping safely. That's the reason why. Right, the pedestrian is a dog trainer. No. The pedestrian is colorblind. No. The pedestrian is deaf. Yes. The pedestrian is an older person. No. What should you do when you're approaching this crossing? Again, enlarge the image. Um, there's people standing there. So it says this crossing, so people are standing there. You need to slow down and be prepared to stop and allow them to cross. Speed up and pass by quickly, no. Prepare to slow down and stop, yes. Stop and wave, no, because you've got a wave in there, so I'm not even gonna go any further. Continue unless the pedestrian steps out, again, no. You're following two cyclists as they approach a roundabout in the left-hand lane. Where would you expect the cyclist to go? They can go in any direction. A cyclist and horse rider would choose the safest position for them, not the same as a car. So if they're in the left-hand lane or right-hand lane, they still can go in any direction. So again, you just want to hold back and just let them do what they've got to do. First one out, any direction is going to be a yes. Um, left, no. Straight ahead, no. Right, no. You're traveling on a narrow section of road. What should you do if a horse rider ahead is riding in the center of the lane? Slow down. It's always going to be the safest option with horses. Just slow down, kill the noise of the engine, and be patient. Get up close behind to encourage them to move aside. No. Sound your horn again. Sound in the horn. No. Move across to the right and try to ease past them. No. Stay behind and allow them to ride in this position. Yes. 
You're approaching this roundabout. What you do when a cyclist is keeping to the left while signaling to the right? Again, um, last image, just hold back, similar to the previous question that we had on cyclists in the left-hand lane, two cyclists in the left-hand lane. Just hold back, be patient. Again, I repeat, you're not in a rush on a driving test or a lesson for that matter. I would take them, no, assume they're turning left, no, sound your horn, again, sound in the horn, no, allow them space to turn, yes. Why do motorcyclists wear bright clothing? <laughs> to make them more visible. It's as simple as that. Sometimes when this question comes up in the classroom, pupils overthink and they think it can't be that simple answer. They wear, or they, they wear bright clothing to be seen clearly. To make them more visible, first for now. The colours are popular, no, they must do so by law, no. It helps keep them cool in the summer, again, no. So there you have it, another series completed, vulnerable road users. As long as you apply the safety factor, it's one of the easy categories to pass. If you haven't already, come and join us in our community on Discord where you can study with like-minded students. If you are struggling with any questions, pull it in the relevant rooms and I or the students in there will respond and give you a helping hand. They keep you focused so you can pass your theory test for next time out. Remember, I am looking for volunteers to come and join me on my channel where I'll do a short interview about your struggles with the theory test, what you like about the theory test, and then we go into a 20 question mock test where I'm going to be coaching you and giving you ongoing support until you pass your theory test and then giving you support with your driving lessons as much as I possibly can until you pass your driving test. Hopefully you got some value from this video. If you did, like, definitely comment below and subscribe. YouTube's gonna show you a video here. I'm gonna show you a video here. Go off on which, which one's relevant to you. And I'll catch you in the next video.